You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 18th of May. U.S. court approves extradition of 2611 attack accused to India. Anti-Pakistan sentiment on rise in Gilgit-Baltistan over wheat crisis. And two U.S. House members allowed to view classified Afghanistan documents. And now for all the details, in a big win for India, U.S. court has approved the extradition of Tahuva Rana, a Canadian businessman of Pakistani descent, to India, where he sought for his involvement in the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. The District Court of California, in a 48-page order, said charges against Rana in India come under extraditable offenses as per treaty between India and the United States. India has accused Rana of participating in the planning and execution of terrorist attacks in Mumbai by collaborating with his childhood friend David Headley. A Chicago court has also convicted Rana for supporting Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror group, which conducted the deadly 2611 attacks. The 60 hours long siege by terrorists had led to death of over 160 people, including six Americans. कि तहाउर हुसैन राणा भी एक 26-11 में एक साजिश करता है और मुझे खुशी इस बात की है कि अमेरिकन कोर्ट ने भारत के पूरे जो सबूत दिए गए थे उस पे विश्वास रखा और उसको एक्सट्रेडिशन के ऑर्डर पास कर दिए and India's Supreme Court on Thursday upheld the constitutional validity of legislation by the state of Tamil Nadu, allowing the traditional festival of Jalikatu, dismissing multiple petitions, including one by the PETA. A five-judge bench said the amendment made by the state government substantially minimizes cruelty to animals in sports. The judgment said Jalikatu cannot be termed a blood sport as nobody is using any weapon and the blood may only be an incidental thing. People in the southern state welcomed the judgment with Tamil Nadu law minister terming the verdict as historic. The decision by Apex Court will also apply to laws on Kambala and bull cart racing in states of Maharashtra and Karnataka. However, Peta India, a petitioner in the case, called the decision anti-Indian. Well, thunderstorms slashed parts of Pakistan's Punjab province, killing at least eight people in rain-related accidents overnight. According to local media reports, most of the people, including women and children, were killed due to collapsing of roofs and walls in remote villages. The Pakistan Meteorological Department said rain is likely to persist in the upper and central parts of the country throughout Thursday and that dust storms and wind storms are also expected. Moving on, anti-Pakistan sentiment is on the rise in Gilgit-Baltistan over wheat shortage and the cut-down on subsidies which is severely affecting the masses in the occupied region. A report. Political activists of the Awami Action Committee have raised concern over the issue of wheat shortage and cut down on subsidies that is particularly hitting the poor and middle classes in Gilgit Baltistan. There have been several protests against the Pakistan government over unfair taxes being imposed and price hike of food items, but all in vain. Locals accuse Islamabad is pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies. Gilgit Baltistan में तीन से चार बहुत अहम इश्यूस हैं जिसमें गंदम का बहरान और ये मौजूदा हकुमत जो गंदम के रेट बढ़ाने के लिए जो एक पॉलिसी बनाई है उसको भी हम बिल्कुल मुस्तरद करते हैं। दूसरी बात जो गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में जो प्याये का जो रेंट्स में इजाफा किया था इसको भी हम मुजम्मत करते हैं और कंडम करते हैं अब हमें कीमतों के चक्कर में जाना नहीं है या हमारी दे दे 20 लाख बोरियां नहीं दे सकती है तो इस वजारत को खत्म करके हमें اقوام متحدہ کے اس اس کے اندر یو این آئی سی پی کے قرارداد کے مطابق ہمیں جو حقوق دیے گئے ہیں self government governments the activist also alleged discrimination in job recruitments raising concern that non natives are being given government jobs and land rights to change the demography of the illegally occupied territory 
And the U.S. State Department has said that two top members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee can view a redacted version of a classified cable about the chaotic August 2021 U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan sought by the committee's Republican chairperson. The chairperson, Representative Michael McCall, had threatened Secretary of State Antony Blinken with contempt of Congress for withholding the document. The Republicans and some Democrats say there has never been a full accounting of the chaotic operation in which 13 U.S. service members were killed at Kabul's airport. Uh, Chairman McCall himself has said that this is what he is interested in. And so it is our sincere hope uh, that our, uh, our, 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 our offer here will sufficient, sufficiently uh, satisfy uh, their request for information. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin has said that China and Sri Lanka are currently in active communications on the island nation's debt restructuring. Sri Lanka owes $7.1 billion to its creditors, including India and Japan. This includes $3 billion owed to its largest bilateral lender, China. Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time in its history last April as its economy faced its worst financial crisis. The island nation has set an ambitious target to complete its debt restructuring framework by September in parallel with the first review of its $2.9 billion IMF program. An IMF team on Monday said the country's economy would contract 3% in 2023. It provides some financing. And authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have stepped up the security of the region ahead of the G20 Tourism Working Group meeting later this month. A series of cultural events have also been organized in the run-up to the event. Take a look. India has stepped up security in its territory of Jammu and Kashmir in the run-up to the Tourism Working Group meeting of the G20 members from May 22nd to 24th, part of a series of meetings ahead of the G20 summit in New Delhi in September. In recent days, at least 10 soldiers and 7 civilians have been killed in multiple terror attacks and encounters in the region by Pakistan-based terrorist groups. A senior police official said a three-tier security cordon has been laid to prevent any untoward incidents before or during the G20 meeting. Summit है और इसके लिए हम लोग पूरी security management किए हैं three-tier security provide करेंगे यह के लिए हम लोग anti drone equipment लगा रहे हैं उसमें energy का help ले रहे हैं army का help ले रहे हैं और water body के लिए डल के लिए हम लोग मार्कोस को team को लगाएंगे अपना police का भी team रहेगा और पूरा Meanwhile, a series of cultural programs have also been organized in Srinagar, the main venue of the G20 Tourism Working Group meeting. The event is expected to have a positive impact on the tourism sector of Jammu and Kashmir, which is the backbone of its economy. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.